Hey guys, I'm Christopher JMUA and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be reviewing the Morphe X Sour Patch Kids collection. And I'm so excited because I love me some Sour Patch Kids. Not that the taste of Sour Patch Kids is going to make me love this collection anymore, but I'm guessing it's going to be bright and colorful just like Sour Patch Kids. And I'm super stoked to try this continuous setting mist in the watermelon scent. I love me some watermelon all day every day. And I also love the continuous setting mist from Morphe, so hopefully this is going to smell amazing. So if you'd like to find out if it does, if you'd like to see what color story this palette has, if you'd like to see how it swatches, how it performs, and what look I create with my initial first impressions, then stay exactly where you are. Keep doing exactly what you're doing, and keep on watching. Now I got this palette and the continuous setting mist from Ulta, but it's also available on Morphe's website. The palette is $22 and the continuous mist is $18. There was also a pink lip gloss for $10, I believe, a blue cream liner that was also $10, and then a bag of Sour Patch Rainbow Beauty sponges, and that was $19. I did not get that though. My jar is full. I cannot fit any more sponges in here. I need one of those bags that you put comforters in that you can take the vacuum and suck all the air out of it. That's where I need to put all my sponges in, just a small suctioned bag. First things first, I have got to smell the setting spray. I just have to, especially before this is discontinued because I'm sure it's gonna be a limited edition collection just like all of the Morphe collaborations, unless it's like with an influencer. Even the packaging is totes adorbs. All it is is a uh, paper casing, but that's okay. Okay, moment of truth. Please smell like artificial watermelon. Please smell like artificial watermelon, like a Jolly Rancher. Oh, <laughs> my heart. I'm so satisfied with that. Mmm. I could just spray that all day long. And I didn't know if you guys knew it, but I just read on the Continuous Mist description on the Morphe website that it leaves a luminous finish. I did not know that. I can definitely agree though. You can see the light reflecting off of my forehead and cheekbones and nose pretty intense. Now let's munch into this palette. And here's the unit carton for the Sour Patch Kids palette. Got a bunch of little Sour Patch Kids on the front looking all cute and delicious. This literally looks like a box of Sour Patch Kids that you would get at the theater. Then on the back we've of course got all of our ingredients at the bottom and it shows at the top there's 18 shades. We are protective in the unit carton, good news. And here's the palette itself. Palette packaging is obviously the exact same as the unit carton package. And let's see if a sheet falls out, it did. And here's the palette. Look at that row of metallics. Oh my gosh, I'm so ready to swatch this. So we're gonna go ahead and zoom in. The first shade is the shade Red Berry. Orange Craze. Lime Burst. Ooh. Lemon Squeeze. Blue Raspberry. Or one might say Blue Raspberry. All gone. Literally my soul once I finish a bag of Sour Patch Kids. Unwrapped. Watermelon, whoa. Pink strawberry. Gimme grape. Serving looks. White pineapple? Sugar crush? That is gorgeous. Super sassy. Pucker up. Party time. Total mischief. And last, major mood. I will go ahead and patch in some photos of the swatches, some sweet swatches, one with flash here. And one without flash, here. And of course we can't forget the video close up. You gotta be able to see the shades up close. Especially with that flash on. Changes everything. Sometimes. Not really. 
every now and then. Like for those shades. Oh. Whew. Yes, ma'am. So if you've been here before, you know I probably don't have a plan, but I did go ahead and prime my eyes with my P. Louise base. I'm kind of drawing some inspiration from the watermelon spray. Not just the smell and how amazing it feels, but the color story. And since I'm drawing inspiration from the setting spray, it's got the green cap on it, but I want to expand on that a little bit. So I'm gonna begin with this Morphe wide brush with a pointed taper to it and start with Lime Burst, but that's gonna go only on the outer portion of the crease. I'm gonna stick with another two-tone crease, like I do. This green is not very pigmented upon initial application. So far, this is the second dip into the pan, if you will, and it is building up. It's just not crazy, crazy potent, but it is a very lime, lime green. So I will cut it a little bit of slack as long as it builds up to what I need it to build up to in the end. You know, a little Sour Patch Kids shaped mirror would have been perfect in this collection. I would have used that. And why did I not get a bag of Sour Patch Kids? if I ordered the Sour Patch palette. Should I not get a bag of Sour Patch Kids? I feel like that should come as default. Every palette ordered is one bag of Sour Patch Kids included in your order. Now for the inner corner, I'm gonna use the Morpheum 330 and go into the shade Lemon Squeeze. She is gonna be so bright and beautiful in this inner corner, hopefully. Please be bright, please be bright and pigmented. Okay like a highlighter. Hello, yellow. Yeah, these shades, or at least these two shades, are so neon, they're performing like a pastel does. How you put it on and it's just kind of lackluster at first, and then you build it up and build it up, and then it turns into the shade that's in the palette. Kind of what I'm running into. Although, the initial bloop of putting that one on was pretty bright. Next, I'm just gonna keep using the same M330 I used for the yellow, but I'm gonna take the shade White Pineapple, and start pulling the yellow up and on top of the brow bone, but blend the yellow into white pineapple, or try to anyway. That is so perfect. It's a yellow white shade. Moment of truth. I'm gonna take the ColourPop E27 brush, a little bullet crease blender, and take blue raspberry, I think, and go ahead and pop this down in the crease. I'm hoping the blue is gonna turn into just a dark green instead, just so it can stay mainly green in the crease. But I won't be mad if it changes to blue a little bit. Ooh, the teal color I'm getting out of this is gorgeous. Time to cut the crease. I'm gonna go off camera, clean this up, get it cut, and I'll be right back. I've finally gotten my crease cut. Took me forever, but you can tell that I made them a little bit bigger than normal this time. It's a whole different vibe. I'm excited to see what it's gonna look like. So now it's time to add the watermelon part of the watermelon look. And the watermelon woe shade is calling my name for sure, but I think I'm also gonna take a little bit of the unwrapped shade and put that in the inner corner. So I'm just gonna use this little beaky blender, really sharp, sharp flat brush, and just try to pack on watermelon woe all the way up to probably about halfway in, I think. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Look at how watermelony that pink is. It is the perfect watermelon. Wow, wow, wow. Because green and pink are complementary colors, this pink looks like it's literally glowing. I love that, that's so fun. Next, I'm gonna take this Morphe flat brush from the most recent Morphe Pride collection. It's another very pointed brush. I should be able to get a nice clean line and I'm gonna take Unwrapped and put that in the inner portion. It'll probably stay about the same color though, so it probably won't be very different. Oh wow, okay, never mind. This actually has a slight, barely there, rosy tint. So this will in fact be perfect to go in with this strawberry shade. Oh, and look at them just melt together. Perfection. This is super, super beautiful. I'm loving this so far. Now as a very last step for the top part of the look, I'm gonna add a little shimmer. I kind of really love this just as is matte, but I've got to put a shimmer on top just to see if something changes. And luckily, based on the swatches, it seems like all of the shimmer or metallic shades in this palette seem to be more like topper shades. They don't really have a whole lot of base pigment to them. That was thunder and that was so loud. So I'm going to use this Elf X J Kissa J1 brush. It's another flat brush, but it's not flat at the end of it. It doesn't come to a point and it's not really sharp. It's just kind of fluffy. And I'm using the shade Super Sassy and I'm just gonna try to lightly dust over the lid. I'm gonna start on the pink side, see what happens. Nothing happens at all. 
<laughs> okay. So instead, I'm gonna use my ring finger. Try that again. Well, finger and brush just leave a little bit of glitter behind. So I guess all I'm gonna do is just keep building and building and see if I can get it to a point where it at least looks like there's some shimmer applied on top. I've got my light dusting of sugar applied to my lids now. So I'm gonna go ahead and go off camera and clean up the shadow underneath my eyes. Not a whole lot of fallout, but just this edge that's not clean. Get all my face makeup on, get my mascara and lashes on, and then we'll come back to finish off the lower lash line and I'll give my final thoughts on the Morphe X Sour Patch Kids palette. See you guys in just a second. It's lower lash line time, and I am gonna start by taking this Glamier Pretty Valentine's Day brush that we got in a BoxyCharm or an Ipsy, don't remember which one. And I think I'm gonna take the shade All Gone, which is the matte black. I know, I know. And I'm gonna try really hard to tight line, not actually tight line, like my upper waterline, tight line my lower lashes. And I'm hopefully just gonna stamp on some of the color so I don't have a ton of fallout. I was trying to think of the colors of a watermelon and what color I was missing, and the only color is black for the seeds, that I can think of anyway. Is there another color I'm not thinking of? I got my green and my pink. Took me a million years to get my crease cut earlier though, cause this hair was in my way every time I turned my head to get a clean line. I've debated a few times while I'm at work with my clippers in my hand and I look in the mirror and I'm annoyed with my hair from it being like this all day while I'm cutting hair being like, get out of my face. And I've contemplated staring in that mirror and just taking those clippers and getting me down to a six guard or an eight guard. But then I think about the last year and a half of my life and trying to grow out my hair and I don't want to lose all that time. What do you guys think? Do you prefer hair on my head? Or do you prefer back in the day when I had like a short messy spike? Let me know in the comments. I'm curious your opinion. Just enough definition. It actually makes my lower lashes look like I've already got mascara on them. I don't. Now I'm going to attempt to use this Morphe X Jerry Star JS 12 brush. And I'm gonna try to build up Lime Burst on this lower lash line and blend out the black with the green. Based on how long the green took to build up on a tacky base, I don't know that I'm gonna get this to even look green on the lower lash line, but I'm gonna give it a shot. Worst case, it doesn't work out and I have to pick something else. Okay, well, <laughs> one dip into the pan, I definitely have a green hue to the lower lash line. Would you just look at that smoky blend? I'm so surprised that that green did build up and blend out with that black. And it turned into almost the same kind of green as what the blue turned the green in the crease to. Like a dark, foresty, kind of grungy green. And I'm not complaining. It definitely fits with the whole watermelon vibe. Loving it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and throw my mascara on my lower lashes and we'll be done with the look. Now that the look is completed, let's ask the question that's on everyone's mind. Am I a Sour Patch Kid? A watermelon one, specifically? Seriously though, yes, I'm a Sour Patch Kid. But also, what do you guys think of this look? I think it's super cute and super bright and super fun. Definitely fits the whole Sour Patch Kids theme. More so the watermelon spray bottle, obviously, as I've said over and over again. But this $22 Sour Patch Kid palette, I think, is worth it. I would try to get a discount in some way, shape, or form. I mean, use a code. Use some of your points at Ulta. And this is hardcore a rainbow palette, but I feel like this color story with the way that it's got the rainbows in there, but you still have a white and a black, a couple of base tones that you could still create some kind of nude look with if you wanted to. Granted, it would be a very basic base tone, but shades like that enable you to make just a neutral crease and get a pop of color if you want to. And I think that's a really smart addition to this palette rather than doing like five pans of neutral and five pans of rainbow. I feel like this is organized and curated in a way that really makes it a fun, interesting, different kind of rainbow palette. And that's what I really like about it. And these shimmer shades, even though they are just topper shades, they are for sure just topper shades, they are even perfect additions to this palette in the sense that they are topper shades, so you can put them on top of any of these bright, bold, colorful matte looks. I think this is probably one of my personal favorite rainbow palettes now, only because of that kind of variety that you get with it. So yeah, I for sure recommend it. And I'm definitely ordering more of these continuous mists because this smells 
fantastic. And I just want to spray my face with it all the time. And with my obsession with watermelon being announced to all of you, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed the review of the Morphe Sour Patch Kids palette slash collection because of this. If you did, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up just to let me know that you enjoyed it. And if you enjoyed it, don't forget to hit subscribe right down there. If you wanna, if you don't want to and you're mean, that's okay too. But if you do want to, it's really cool if you click on it and then hit the bell right beside it and change it to all notifications. That way you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. And you don't want to miss out on these launches or these reviews or these collections, or these first impressions, or these unboxings, or these makeup 101s, or these throwback Thursdays. You don't wanna miss it. So make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell. Also, if you like this look and you wanna see more looks like them, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, and TikTok. My username is the same for everything. It's just Christopher JMUA. And if you gain nothing out of this video, if you gain nothing out of any of my videos, then please at least gain this. And that is to always remember and to never forget that you are absolutely beautiful. And I love you guys. Bye.